It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock here in the Midwest and Central Time. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another DJ Roundtable, and this is an international edition because we actually have someone all from Australia, DJ Dinah Blen, Kurt. Uh, he's up here, and uh, he is, uh, as always, great to have and uh, has a lot of insight. Even though he is uh, not doing as many gig logs on YouTube, unfortunately, uh, you know, work and life and stuff like that gets in the way, and I understand it, but uh, we do it here all the time, and I still have some great DJs here. We got DJs from Indiana, uh, another Chicago DJ. We got North Carolina, South Carolina, and we should have a few more coming in in just a little bit. Um and then uh, Brentley is probably not going to – oh, he's – actually, he's here in Chicago to visit his mom. So uh, hopefully uh, she's doing 100%. Uh, he just <laughs> sent me a message. This is uh, this is how life is. You know, life gets in the way of things, and we're all working DJs. So as we have people come in, we have people come in and having fun, and who can make it, who can make it. But I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. And if you haven't done so already, if you're watching us on Twitch – Please make sure that you're following the channel and we can answer questions live real time on Twitch. If you are also watching this on YouTube, make sure you do me a few things. You need to help me beat the YouTube algorithm. It is a hard beast to slay. So make sure you get the thumbs up, smash the subscribe button. And then tickle the bell icon to make sure that you know when videos drop. I usually put videos up on Mondays at noon Central Time. Uh, I also put some other videos. It's an unboxing video about my new little drone that I have. Actually, I have taken it out. I have it right here. Um, my new little drone. So it's one of the things that... Uh, is great. I, I saw that, uh, Brelly. Yep. Hopefully you're having fun with mom here and enjoying the uh, overcast skies here in Chicago. A uh, little storms moving in and out. Had a little storms this morning and looking to have probably some more storms this evening. So hopefully you're enjoying yourself uh, with your mom and keeping it cool and uh, enjoying some beautiful uh, Italian beef and uh, good hot dogs and pizza. Other than that, uh, we're going to go on with the show and Again, if you got any questions or that, don't forget to put it down in the chat. We always like to hear real questions from DJs. So I'm going to start off with this here today. Um, as you, uh, Right now in Chicago, this week is the week of Marquee, which is a kind of like a lot of other of the DJ shows or expos. Uh, DJ X is coming up in Atlanta, uh, Atlantic City. Uh, that is going to be for your East Coasters. Uh, for us Midwesters, usually uh, Marquee is really great. And then, of course, on the West Coast, they have the big one. And uh, I think it's was it, they would keep moving around because of uh, of uh, the virus uh, back in January. I think it's back to January again. So it's one of the things that when you look at all the different shows that are out there and so forth so on, is there a show that uh, you like more than others? And I I'm actually going to start with uh, Taylor and Jordan, this one. Um, are you going to go to Marquee or are you going to go to DJX or you can go to another expo anytime soon? Or are you planning on to anytime in the future? We we're planning on going to Marquee maybe tomorrow. I don't know. We're playing it by ear. Uh, I was actually just looking up when you were talking what time the show floor is open till. Um, I'll depending on if I can make it in time. I do want to go to the um, after party tomorrow night at 8, the, the DJ of the Year spinoff. If you have free passes, you can get the expo and any of the after um, party events, and then you also get like sponsored um, seminars. But I didn't buy passes this year. Is your, uh, is your mixer on? Because it sounds like you're coming no, I'm using mic. the webcam mic. Okay. Okay. Usually you get your mics on here with that. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Have, we ran out of time. Ran out of time. We were no, no, late. no, no problem. 
this is this is this is the thing people need to understand that we are humans we have lives we have families we have stuff going on you know i don't have a glorious studio this is a spare bedroom in my house and if you kind of look corner to quarter there you might see a uh a box over there or two just because again it's a spare room in my house i have part of it for my office so it, we're all here with different areas and stuff like that so don't worry about that so Hopefully, you guys might make it marquee, and you want to see the DJ, uh, DJ of the year for uh, um, at eight o'clock tomorrow. Um, I know KC uh, usually has some good parties, and that's mm -hmm. always a fun thing. So make sure that if you go there, um, you know, have fun, enjoy yourselves. Again, I'm going to try and see if I can do some kind of meetup or something like that, because I again, I got some people I know here. Uh, coming down as well as they're here and see if we can maybe meet up for dinner or something like that tomorrow night. I got to see. Um, I will keep uh, all the people who are local in the loop and ask, do they want to meet up and stuff like that? Because that is my old stomping grounds in the city. I grew up not far from there. So, and Tracy works literally blocks away from there. So I, I know the area very, very well. Um, so you're, you're planning on going... Is there any other show that you want to go to to go see anything or? Uh, definitely, I will go back to Midwest next year. I do have tickets, or we have tickets for Midwest and um, Max. I'm iffy. I might try to get rid of the Max tickets. Um, just because it's a long way to travel, and I'm not sure. I do want to make sure I make it to Midwest, so. If it was between the two, I'm definitely going to go to Midwest next year and uh, just get Max. But I did, I did buy tickets for both. Yeah, going to Vegas is hard. Um, you know, Vegas used to be a cheap place to go, cheap destination. Now, unfortunately, is up there in cost. And then when you start going into uh, California and Anaheim for then, for it, it's, it's, it's expensive. And you have to you have to really look at, is it worth going there? I know the one in uh, Las Vegas, that's more geared for photo booth. And as DJ that's kind of second. Like. Yeah, it's like, like more photo booth than DJ second versus marquee is DJ as well as photo booth. So it has the bounce rate too. And I, I saw someone here uh, put a video up on Facebook. Um, uh, they had one of the guys in the robot suits that sometimes some of the DJs, have these guys running around with robots that shoot, you know, CO2 cans out of their hands and stuff like that. I don't understand it. I wouldn't ha hire someone to do it. Someone slips and falls, that's a, that, that right there. Insurance. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, oh. okay. Go ahead. There is another one in Vegas. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, I don't, it's geared towards more all wedding vendors. Um, wedding MBA? Wedding MBA. Uh, yeah, I do wedding MBA. That out eventually, but uh, I don't think it's geared towards maybe even 10 percent dj they but have not, some they have some gear there it's a lot se it's seminar driven so it's a lot of seminars to go to and listen to them uh some of the seminars unfortunately uh I, i'm not saying anything bad about anyone but some of the seminars some of those people are like hey buy my dvd or buy my online service and you'll be the best whatever it's kind of like, yeah, and, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully we'll, we'll got to figure out we can do something tomorrow. Uh, Kurt, down there in Australia, I'm sure that they have some DJ expos down there showing off new gear and stuff like that, right? You just can hear me, right? Is this mic working? Yep. You want to turn your volume up a little bit. Yeah, I wanted to use the headphones, but... It wasn't working for some reason. Can you hear me a bit better? Yep, hear you better now. Um, we have a little mini expo uh, down south. I've, I've been trying to get to it for the last few years, but it's they have it midweek, so a Tuesday and a Wednesday, I think it is. Um, Same as here. Yeah, it's too hard to get to. Um, if they had it on the weekend, it, it'd make it a bit easier. Uh, yeah. See, I, I just want to go to one of the expos over there at, at Vegas. I'd love to do that one year. <laughs> Dude, get your get, get your you got get your passport, get your visa, come up here, have fun. <laughs> you know, I, I I know you uh, Australians love uh, love the uh, 
the desert. So, you know, it, Las yeah. Vegas is like perfect, you know. <laughs> Last time I was in the States was 2015. So, well, you need to come back or move here, move here permanently. <laughs> You'd be my neighbor. <laughs> you guys get paid good money for DJ gigs. So I might keep that in mind. Hey, you and, never and know. Then, and then you get your tip too. So tips are always nice when you get them. Yes, it's always great and greatly appreciated when people do that. So it's, it's always nice. But uh, at, you know, that's one thing with the expos they do during the week. So that way, DJs who you know usually work weekends, they can do their weekend gig, go to whatever karaoke, wedding party. And not worry about taking time away from that. That's that's one of the things I I, I kind of wish they would do. See again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is usually work work days. But if they did like a half a day on Friday, you know, like the closing on Friday and get done by Friday mid afternoon, that would get time to go. People go to gigs and stuff like that. But again, I'm not. I don't run a show. I don't have a show for a. DJ Expo, so uh, I'm not an expert in that area, but it, it is interesting. Uh, I'm going to go up to Jeff in uh, good old the Carolinas in North Carolina there. Uh, do you have an expo that you're eyeing that you'd like to go to or that you are going to? No, not right offhand. Um, I don't often go to many expos. Um, I find my, most everything I need online, you know, uh, as far as you know, education, uh, products, that type of thing. So I don't have to be the first to see or witness a, uh, a specific item or, uh, or an event. So I'm, I'm not a big goer of, uh, of expos or seminars. So uh, I don't have any uh, that I'm eyeing currently. Right here with Top Light DJ. And that's, that's the thing is that, you know, again, expos are not for everyone. Um, and that's, that's one of the things people have to think about. What do I need to go there for? Am I going there to learn something? Am I, do I want to see new product? You know, who is there? What brands are there? There may be brands there that you want to see. It may be brands there that unfortunately you, you won't see, you know, uh, that you're, you're not caring for, you know, like myself, I don't do photo booth. So photo booth, you know, equipment, you know, I'd be cool to see cause I'm a gear hound, but it wouldn't be like, hey, I got to go there because I got to go see to do his photo with equipment. It's like, yeah, I don't do it. So, but um, yeah, again, I totally understand that. But is there like a class you would take or anything like that or any kind of speaker you love to go see or anything like that, uh, Jeff? Um, not that I couldn't find online or on YouTube. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, it's uh, the, in, in my mind, these events are made for, you know, uh, venues to make money and uh you know they have exhibitors that pay to you know to uh to, to put their product out there and that it's it's a great way to get their product seen by the people who are going to buy it i understand that um but you know it, it is a money-making event and it is what it is if you see it for what it is and uh i i just prefer to spend my money in different in different other areas i guess um so you know, I, I like to continue my education, but um, for me, it looks like uh, from uh, from all the people that I follow on YouTube, those uh, those events are are party time, <laughs> and then they can write them off on their taxes at the end of the year. <laughs> so it's just, well, yeah, it's a know, little bit of social uh, gathering. It is a big, uh, one big giant party, and they they come back with a hangover and uh, and maybe get a little ed education and see some new equipment. So that, yeah, that's kind of how yeah. I see. It. But also, they they a lot of times they have a lot of cool new gear that they show off, and you know, it, it, it all boils down to what you take of it. Yeah, some people do uh, take, you know, go into a show like that, like Marquee and. Um, you know, a lot of the other one, NAM and stuff like that, they look at it as a big party. You know, NAM is more geared more toward the selling group, like the retailers and stuff like that, versus, you know, the end user like us. Uh, they, um, that's one thing all these people get excited about NAM. Like, you know, um, Matt, he gets excited about going to NAM. And NAM uh, just, just to me, it's like, yeah, if, if I was setting up to, you know, open a store up, I would say NAM would be a good one to go to. But just, you know, being an end user, yeah, there's a lot of cool new stuff they released. You know, the manufacturers released this and that. 
but I would I would just say, hey, you know, I'd wait for wait for another show, and that way I can get my hands on it and it's actually get retail pricing or maybe put an order in versus you know Nam. Yeah, there's some retail stores there, but it's mostly geared for the retail stores to buy to sell to us. Uh, cool thing. Would you uh, are you looking at or going to or think about going to any DJ Expo? And would you go in? What would you go for classes, or would you go to go see gear? What would be your thing thing, or just hang out at the bar all night and drink uh, coffee? <laughs> well, I would love to go to a, like a expo or a DJ show, but here where I live, we're not really big on like expos and stuff like that for DJs. So if I went somewhere, it would be somewhere like far away from here and. I would have to go somewhere far away from here in order to go to one. So I'm not really thinking about it. Well, here, here's the thing to think about. You go out because you're right by the ocean. You hop on a boat and you start running north. And, you know, take a little bit of a ride. Not quick, not quick little jaunt. Go, go north to Atlantic City and you can go to DJX then. You know, just, it's a, it's, a, it's what, like, I don't know how long by, by boat. Probably like, uh -huh. you know. No, eight I'm hours, like, ten hours, something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of like Jeff Johnson where I'm not a big expo type of guy and I can just look at the products and stuff on Amazon or wherever. <laughs> so I'm not really in the rush. To no buy problem. Anything. And I'm pretty happy with, with what I've got. <laughs> and, you know, that's the thing is that you also had to look at, is it worth going? Because, you know, do I have everything I need right now? Or am I looking to spend money? And that's one of the things these shows are. They are they are just to for you to look at new gear and say, hey, do I need that new speaker? Do I need that new light? Hey, this manufacturer has this new cool thing. Uh, one of the guys showed a uh, a snow machine, and I made a comment. Um, Unless you're making winter movies, I would pass because <laughs> I'm not gonna have a snow machine at my wedding. Because that would be a mess to clean up all over the floor. Yeah, that, like, no. But uh, I will tell you, one man who does a lot with clubs and stuff like that, he might do a, a phone party. That is Tommy, a.k.a. DJ Apoc or DJ, DJ Apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, um, are, you, are you thinking of maybe not? I know we talked a little earlier before. You didn't said you weren't thinking of going to Marquee. But uh, would you think about going Marquee in the future or one of the other uh, DJ... Uh, Shows anywhere in the U.S.? Uh, I mean, obviously, Nam is pretty cool. I'd like to get out there sometime to meet, mainly like to meet up with some of the DJs out there, like Matt or um, Carlos, uh, DJ Unstoppable. He lives out there. Uh, so, like, that'd be pretty cool. Otherwise, um, Midwest DJs Live is pretty cool up in Milwaukee. Um, I think, right, that's the one in Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the one so, past Cheddar Curtain. You get, oh, I, yeah. you know, us Illinoisans have to watch it because uh, here, here's a funny thing: when you go north on uh, 94 at the Illinois Wisconsin border, uh, the Wisconsin State Patrol sits right there on the highway, and they they sit right there waiting to uh, write uh, tickets to us Illinoisans, and they have uh, cute little nicknames for us Illinoisans. Um, <laughs> and uh, they they look for us speeding. So when I get, when, when I get close to the border. I usually see my less Illinois State uh, State Trooper, the Illinois State Police. I oh, there's Illinois State Police. Okay, I see the sign come around the corner. It's like welcome to Wisconsin, and I see that uh, that shed there for the uh, highway maintenance for uh, Wisconsin's yeah, and the, Department and the, of Transportation. The way, the uh, I'm like, yep, that's it. Yeah. You made sure speed limit's sixty or seventy. That's what I'm doing. I do not want the Wisconsin State Patrol on me. But yeah. <laughs> I know get out uh, of the left lane too. Yep, I know. I know Jordan likes to go up there to uh, Midwest Live. Jordan, when you go to Midwest Live, um, and uh, Taylor, when you guys go up there, or just Jordan goes up there, I know you went up there last time. Uh, you go up there to hang out more, or you go up there to look at gear more. Uh, Midwest really isn't geared towards like the exhibit floor. There's honestly only like ten exhibits, and they're in the same room as the seminar um i i would say hang out but also i i do enjoy the seminars uh some of the seminars are not just good for like learning dj or sales thing but some of them are just good like personally to help you in your personal life uh 
like time management or you know uh, cognitive orders and things like that. Um, but uh, I like to I I'm, I have a lot of hard time meeting people and getting out of there, get out there, so that it helps with that too. I well, yeah, because you know I don't really know a lot of DJs around here. Like my friends don't understand. So um, well, again, you know, I, I now like you got to... a show. You got a show. You could tell them, that, "Hey, I'm on a show on YouTube. Have you guys seen it? <laughs> Look, my wife and I are on this show along with all these other DJs, and we're all talking about DJ stuff. You should be watching this show. That's 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 that right there is a great thing because you, you can easily you, you know DJ. when you talk to someone like, "Hey, have you seen DJ Roundtable? I'm on that show. It's on YouTube." You know, and then they say, you know, no, I haven't seen it. Or they say, hey, I won't watch it because of Matt. Well, you know, it's all Matt's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Matt, He's I know Matt goes to Nam. On, on Facebook. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. People are hating me on Facebook. I love it. I, love oh. it. I just saw that. I just saw that today. Okay, okay. They're going I don't in care. on here. So get well, Travis yeah. on the show. Get Travis on this show. I, I, I just want to comment, though. Oh. I, I, I didn't comment because I didn't want people like rioting in the streets. <laughs> Do you think you get more like I think people don't understand that you live in Orange County. No, like, they don't. People want that in Orange County. People don't want that in Northwest Indiana. No. They would look at me like who, who are you who are you marketing to? Right. Yeah. No, and, it's like he yeah. <laughs> I he posted like a wedding video and it's like, oh look at me, I'm DJing this wedding and doing this like and it was, you know, all overlaid with audio because it was from a videographer. And all I said was, would love to know what you're actually playing, though. And then he just went off on me thinking like, uh, oh, he's attacking me because all I play is Dancing Queen and Sweet Caroline and crap. And I'm like, I never said that. I was just saying I would love to know what you're playing because like I gave him props when he started doing this house disco vibe stuff that he's been starting to do. So like the fact he went off on me was just like. And then a couple of people went to my defense, like, I saw nothing wrong with this statement. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I like the yeah. one that said it was like, uh, <laughs> you get 40 people to dance at a 200 person wedding and you're happy with yourself. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> Bernie. Bernie's funny. I actually know that guy personally, Bernie Gaps. He's uh, he's just like an old dude that loves like rock music. And every time I post something on my Instagram, he's like, how do people listen to this noise? <laughs> I don't know. Read the five star review I got from that couple that I just posted. Like, I don't care that the, the parents weren't dancing. Like, it's an Asian couple and their like family is heavily conservative. Like, obviously, they're not going to dance anyway. So, like, the bride and groom said, "We want EDM and nothing more." I don't get parents that are paying for the weddings. It's always the people that are booking me are the bride and groom, and they're paying. So I'm catering to them and their guests and their friends. Like, these people just don't understand it. Like, I. I don't know. It's I, I don't care. It's, it's Oh, it's, you're a cool dude, Matt. You're a cool dude. <laughs> I would actually have you. The setup looks too. awesome, but if I did that yeah. at a wedding, I think I would get some looks. And yeah, we, we we blew the power. We blew the power for the whole venue one time. Uh, and we were in three different 20 amp circuits and it still blew power to the whole. And they're all on separate circuits. I, I checked. Everyone's labeled. And uh, we had to run a cable for the subs outside into like uh, a storage shed that had like beefier you know actual power uh and it's like yeah so it's just that said it was it was bumping and then at 10 o'clock somebody from the, the coordinator team uh and i'm not a fa big fan of these coordinators i work with them before they're they present well online but like when push comes to shove at the event they're just kind of useless let's say but anyway uh they don't watch this it's fine they uh <laughs> they, they like the dp made her out the, the she at, at 10 She's like, oh, we have to bring it down to 65 decibels. And I'm like, I'm talking to you in 65 decibels. She's like, I don't want the cops to be called. And I was like, I didn't say it, but this is in Santa Ana. Well, it's technically in Orange, but like Orange is near Santa Ana. And people don't call the cops there for noise. It's not like San Clemente or Mission Viejo or like Ritzy. It's kind of like a rundown area. So like people aren't going to call the cops on a wedding venue. And like I walked outside right behind where the subs were. Their doors like do an amazing job of blocking out sound. It was dead quiet outside. So I turned it down for like five minutes and then turned it right back up and we never had any problems. Uh, but it's like, I wasn't about to just stop the party to bring it to 65 decibels. I don't think that system can go as low as 65 decibels. So. Oh, it can, it can. But the thing <laughs> is that, you know, 65 decibels, people 
this is, this is one of the things I've said before. Uh, people don't understand what noise levels are, and, and a lot of municipalities have, uh, you know, ordinances that say this level of sound it can't be more than 70 decibels and that's generally usually where the ordinance is written is from the complainant's property line so you'd have to go to where, who the complainant is stand on their property line and then have a decibel meter and read the decibel that's one of the things mm -hmm. is you know especially if the police come somewhere have a decibel meter this way you can show the police what it is right outside the venue if you're inside of it people just hearing sound okay, you're below the decibel reading. You don't have to worry about anything. And then inside, you know, you could be louder. I've, I've run into a few venues that have very restricted sound. People call the police on uh, our weddings. Uh, we actually had the police call during the middle of a ceremony. People are doing their vows. The police show up. We're like at like, you know, uh, outside on the property line. We're at like 53 decibels. The vehicle driving by had made more noise than uh, we were making. And you can hear it, but you can't hear it clearly because that's not what we're trying to do. But yeah, we've run into that previously, and all you can do is kind of battle it and kind of follow the rules. But uh, the great thing is when you have a sound uh, sound meter, it helps out tremendously. So Matt, you're um, setting the uh, internet world on fire yet again with uh, some great comments. But we were <laughs> we were talking about uh, Marquee kicked off this week here in Chicago. Oh. Real quick, notice that I never attack anybody directly. I never say, you suck as a DJ. I never say, like, I might say your setup looks like crap, but I will never say, like, uh, you're a bad DJ or, like, you're disservicing your client. Like, I'm not, I don't attack people. I maybe just, like, say in a more forceful way that, like, oh, your cable job sucks. Like, instead of, like, I, I'm trying to, instead of constructively criticize, I'm doing that by, like, pointing it out and making you feel bad about what you did. <laughs> uh, nothing that you said on my YouTube channel has made me feel bad. It just made me feel worse and makes me feel like, angry. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Uh, like, Rachel's group? You, you got kicked out? <laughs> yeah, I got kicked out of Rachel's group, but that was like... I missed that group. Rachel I hates me, Travis hates me, and Lou Paris hates me. I think Lou's a great DJ, though. I've told him that numerous times. Like he, I've watched his gig logs, and I'm thoroughly enjoyed because he's he's great with mixing and song selection, and he just he knows how to, he knows how to DJ. He's he's good at that. He just you know. I, anyway, back to Marquee. No, I'm not going to Marquee. Well, I know you're not coming to Marquee because you're you're obviously there in LA, and it's a little distance. But uh, Marquee just kicked off this week here. Uh, for uh, you know, one of the shows, and their DJ X coming up in Atlantic City coming up. Uh, uh, is it next month, July or August? Uh, it's coming up soon. And then, of course, you know, there, you always had the one in uh, Las Vegas, uh, Max, and then you go, of course, always have Nam out there in uh, Anaheim. The uh, I know you go to I know I know you go to Nam. You love that you love that in at Anaheim and stuff like that, but. Is there another wedding show that you would like to go to? And is it more because you want to learn more or do you want to see gear more or you want to socialize more? Which one of those three would you say that would be a reason why you would go to Nam or any show? Uh, the gear. I, I love gear. Like I don't go to Nam to, to do any conferences or learn anything. I'm not going to learn anything from sitting in a room with like, I, I don't want to say I know everything, but like, I don't, think that what these people are saying at these conferences are going to do anything for me. So uh, I like to go to shows to like network with other guys. Like I'm going to DJ Expo because like all the friends that I know, like on the East Coast will be there and like other DJs and like I've never been to Jersey. So it sounds fun. And I'm going to be there Monday, Tuesday and part of Wednesday and spend Thursday at Six Flags over there. So like, you know, making a trip out of it. But I like the gear. I love the demos. Um, like, like that's why I love Nam is the demo rooms. Like I catch every single demo because I just I love to hear what different stuff sounds like and uh, you know stuff like that. I don't really uh, I don't go for the seminars or I'm not I'm not a networking kind of person. Like I don't I don't network with other vendors. Well, uh, I'll hang out and grab a beer with them if you call that networking. Uh, that's networking, but, yeah. That's that's what's happening yeah. here at uh, right about now. Love, at, uh, one of the after parties for <laughs> Marquee, they're yeah, at one of the I bars love. tonight, and they're at the bar one of the bars tomorrow night. And it'll be Thursday night, and you know people leaving on Friday. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's it's one of the things that uh, I think that's a big thing with what with shows, it'd be a, a wedding MBA or anything, is that social aspect of it and going there and meeting and talking to other DJs and asking questions and getting information and getting ideas. And uh, I know that uh, because you're a social butterfly on the uh, interwebs and uh, everyone loves you and stuff like that. I'm I don't sure even use, I don't even use Facebook besides that stupid group. <laughs> I, I hardly post on Facebook any like I don't do statuses. I don't I mean, you see, I do everything on Instagram, but uh, it, I, I know IG, those groups. I, IG it's much more than uh, Facebook. Yeah. And it, it's one of the things that I just I again, I just find it funny. Um, because the fact that it's like, oh, well, hey, uh, what's going on? What's happening? Oh, wow. I saw the, uh, I saw the reply today, uh, and I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I'll ask Matt what's going on, but you explain what happened. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's one of the things that, um, I would never say for anyone to, uh, talk bad about our DJ, I always try to say, hey, why do you, do you not like, you know, cable ties or something like that? You know, or, hey, you know what? Have you thought about doing this? Have you thought about that? You know, it, it's stuff like little things like that. Because I see guys with cables all over the place and it's like, hey, dude, you know what the best cable tie is this one? Or, hey, you know, Amazon hey, has the Velcro cable ties on sale right now. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I'm telling you, you, you exactly. need a few cable ties and... It's not trying to be mean. It's you're trying to help them. You want them to have a good look. You know, if you look at how people progress, you know, like, you know, Hunter, Hunter, where he started at when he first started DJing to where he is now, it's like night and day. He understands that stuff. He understands how to set stuff up. And that's with everyone, including myself. I look at some of these pictures and I've showed you guys pictures here in the, in the, in the chat uh, when we're off, off the show. Uh, when we're just basically in the green room. I show pictures of some of my old setups, you know, pair of the older generation eons with cables just laying down cables going to the front of the table it just way it is you know versus like you know like my wedding is past uh saturday there was no room to put up a facade there was no room for anything it was no room for nothing you know and that that's sometimes you have to say okay fine great it's it's doesn't look great but it is what it is because it has to do a job but when you see someone consistently doing something you're like Maybe they don't understand me. They don't know. And, and again, it happens. People don't know everything. I don't know everything. I like to learn. If I see them say, say my setup and says, hey, have you thought about this or that? I look at it as, okay, you're adding some information to me and helping me out. And that's that's the important thing. But And then some people constantly get attacked. And, you know, I, I totally understand it. They, you know, they're getting attacked all the time from whoever. Uh, sometimes you say something and they just, they're mad. They're mad at whatever. And you, I, I want no ill will toward any other DJ. That's the thing. Um, so, Dwayne, what about you? Um, I know Marquee is uh, this week, and I know you got your regular job. But have you ever thought of coming to Marquee? I know next year, the end of August, beginning of August, you will officially uh, retire from your regular job as a teacher. But would uh, Marquee be on your list of uh, possible shows to come to? Or would you go out to DJX or go out to to uh, visit uh, uh, Matt out there in California for NAMM or anything like that? Is any of the shows uh, exciting you or anything like that? And if so, is it more for gear, social, or for learning? I would have went to the one that's, that you all have in Chicago. But it's like it's like as soon as they um, said the job was open for the summer job, I took that one so I can beef up my A skill. But definitely next year, I plan on going to um what is it marquee marquee and, yep i'm planning on going there and there was a couple of classes that i thought would be interesting of taking so i do that and then of course look around and see what's new and what's happening well i de definitely gotta go i definitely at least gotta get lunch with you if not go to dinner uh <laughs> and you know spend some time with you in person here in chicago and that goes for anyone who comes to chicago for like any of the shows that are here if they want to meet up and stuff like that, you know, on Instagram, you could send me a message and say, Hey, I'm I'm at the Marquee show. Would I, you know, I'd like to uh I'd like to talk to you in person. That's that's not a problem. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And we've always figured something out, depends on schedules and so forth. Um now we got that out of the way, including the uh the the the, the fun thing that Matt is uh having there on social media. <laughs> 
Um, the, uh, this past week, um, this past weekend, I ran into the facility. Um, it was very hot here in Chicagoland. Uh, Saturday was, was it 93, 94 for air temperature and then plus the humidity and plus everything else. Um, and let's see here. Uh, Uh, 93 for you Kurt it would be 33.8 degrees Celsius I had to do the map math real quickly with high humidity so <laughs> yeah. thank God for Google so that you understand what that is here us Americans we know what Fahrenheit is 93 is hot <laughs> and um I, the facility I went to had uh they had the air conditioning on but it was set higher and then um it was like not working. It was so muggy and hot in there. And then we had the wedding. We had the reception. People were sweating when they were eating. They were sweating profusely and, you know, dancing, having fun. I didn't have a huge crowd. It was 70 people. But the thing mm -hmm. is that, you know, it's one of the things with high heat, high humidity, high temperature in a venue. Is there something that you try to do to keep yourself comfortable, heat, cold, whatever, in a uh, event, you know, if you're outdoors, indoors, whatever, there's anything that you do, uh, if you know, or you have in your vehicle or in your, uh, your toolbox, you have, uh, something. So I'm going to start with a uh, hunter there in uh, beautiful South Carolina, which is usually 93 degrees. Probably, uh, they call that Monday. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, is, is yeah. that, uh, is there something that you do to keep yourself comfortable in extreme heat or extreme cold? I sure do. I um, usually there's a fan provided, like a really large fan provided to keep me cool. And sometimes I drink plenty of like Gatorade and water. And sometimes when it gets really, really hot, my Gatorade and water tends to get like burning hot. And I just, I just keep on drinking anyway because I don't want to pass out and get dehydrated. Especially this, I mean, this is the South and yeah. it gets really humid here in the summer. Yeah, and that that's that's the crazy part is that um, you know it being warm and stuff like that. It, it a lot of places will give you cups of ice and stuff like that. You know, venues you can get, ask for cups of ice or ice water and stuff like that. And then I had water. Tracy ran and grabbed me some a uh, couple glasses of water. And the cool thing is that uh, the one thing uh, they had it's kind of an old school restaurant. Uh, they had RC, so I was like, I'll be like, whoa, oh, okay, I'll have a glass of RC, which. Uh, you know, and I'm not some bad dying blend. You probably know RC brand for stop yeah, drinks. Cola? Yep, I RC do. cola. It's that's uh, do, but, but sometimes that doesn't work in the humidity. It makes you feel worse if you do, if you drink soda. Mostly Gatorade water really helps. Well, G Gatorade has electrolytes and has more, um, it has more salts in there to keep you you know, more hydrated. But again, yeah. in one glass. That's why I had for that. It wasn't like I was down in all those all night. But having one of those. You know, it helped, you know, but the thing is that I was drinking more water than anything. Um, but so fans and stuff like that, Gatorade and water you go to. Uh, I'm going to go to, actually, to Kurt, and go to uh, Australia. I know, uh, what's the highest temperature you've seen where you're at in uh, Australia? 40 degrees of 100% or 90% humidity. So that's 104 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I... I'm just started blacklisting venues that have no air conditioning or poor air conditioning. I'm just not interested anymore. Um, so there's a few venues I just won't go to anymore. Like, you know, they want to be a wedding venue, but they're just not professional. Um, as I said, air con, air conditioning not working. Um heavy sound restrictions we just talked about that i yeah couple venues i just blacklist now i'm not interested that's how i stay cool yeah. other than that i'll bring a little fan i got a battery powered fan yeah and that's that's one of the things is you know try and keep yourself comfortable when you're there especially the first time we were the first time we were there at this venue um i would probably say you know i would talk to a couple beforehand and you know knowing more now knowing what to expect more 
I can go into it with a different attitude and different be prepared a little more because we're prepared. But the thing is that, you know, again, the heat and be uncomfortable for a while, both Tracy and I, you know, not sound mm-hmm. bad Saturday night. It was ended at 10 o'clock, which is great. The couple was awesome. Uh, even got a five star review from them. Awesome couple, awesome people. Love them. Uh, love their family. Uh, but the thing is, that, again, be uncomfortable throughout the night and get it in. And then we ran into uh, some heavy storms Saturday night and away home. I, I posted on my personal Facebook uh, video. Uh, I was actually in the passenger seat because Tracy like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And she, I hopped in the passenger seat. She's like, I'm driving. And I'm like, okay, no problem. <laughs> and uh, we uh, drove through uh, rainstorms. We got the uh, um, highway and got in side street, uh, service streets and, yeah, it was uh, it was not fun on the way home, but uh, the air conditioning felt great. <laughs> the, I'm gonna go to my other friend who was also in a hot climate in North Carolina. Uh, Jeff, I know you get warm down there as well. Um, what do you do to keep comfortable? Or again, let's do the opposite. It's really cold. What do you do to keep warm or anything to keep yourself comfortable? Uh, you know, the hardest part around here is keeping cool. Um, you know, my biggest thing is, um, DJing outside at an event, uh, in the summer when it's, uh, 90 or above, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult. Uh, I have a pivoting, uh, high velocity fan that I take with me on hot days that I set up under the table, under my DJ booth, to blow cold air or air on me. It's not cold. Um, so that, that helps quite a bit. Uh, I always carry an extra, like a hand towel with me when, uh, but you're going to be sweating, uh, setting up equipment no matter what. Um, so I, I like to just have a towel handy, keep on my shoulder, uh, when I'm setting up, uh, keep close by when I am DJing just to wipe the sweat from my brow, if nothing else. Uh, a couple of hacks that I use, um, if I'm outside and it's humid and it's hot, uh, obviously I like to, you know, have a cover over me if possible to keep the direct sun off the equipment, especially my computer. Uh, one thing I like to do with my computer is I tilt the uh, back of it up. I've got two little feet on my um, DJ uh, table that gets the back up to about, you know, maybe an inch and a half. It just allows more airflow under the computer. Uh, it keeps it from overheating. Uh, in extremely hot situations, I was uh, DJing a pool party last summer and pool opening, and it was extremely hot. So I took um, these little plastic ice packs that you can put in a cooler or whatever, stuck it under my computer uh, that, you know, I had two of them. They only it probably melted in, you know, less than an hour, but uh, it just, you know, keeps the air flowing through there. That's a little cooler and it helps, uh, helps your, uh, your computer from overheating, which is the biggest problem is your computer is going to overheat and then, you know, you're dead in the water, but uh, uh, I always have a backup, you know, I've, I've got, um, got my iPad always uh, set up, plugged in to the controller, ready to go with all my backup music. So if I uh, do lose a computer, I've got a song usually queued up on my iPad, ready to hit at a moment's notice. Uh, most every DJ does that, you know, just uh, some sort of backup. Um, yeah, that's about it for keeping cool, keeping warm. It's, you know, dress the occasion. You know, if it's a cold day and you're outside, which is never happened for me. Uh, usually if it's uh, DJing uh, during the winter, you're inside somewhere. Uh, I have i don't recall ever being cold DJing. Um, you know, it's it's always the other way around. So those, those are my two cents. Yeah, same thing here in South Carolina. It's the same weather where like in the winter it's barely cold and it's always hot in the summer so I'm, i know where you i know where you're coming from jeff <laughs> I, I know one of the things that uh, we have available here in the states i don't know if it's available in australia it's i i am called icy breeze i c y b r e e z e it it looks like a uh it looks like a cooler has little wheels has a little handle but it has a built-in motor and you can get an optional battery for it. It's about $300 for the bigger battery or $270 for the smaller battery. And it uses the ice in the chest that you can keep like your drinks in, your food in, whatever. And it keeps that cool and cold. It's, you know, insulated. Uh, yep. 
uh, it's an insulated uh, chest and it has a fan that blows cold air. So it's actually air conditioned. So it is not like a, uh, I know some people build like their little swamp coolers and stuff like that. They grab and buy a cheap uh, a chest and they put in you know, some ice and a fan to blow air across. Uh, they've done some videos of it on their website and it looks interesting of them actually uh, showing the temperature air flow coming out and how much air is coming out of it. Uh, it looks very interesting. And then I always uh, think about that kind of item for those hot days to do outside. Uh, I definitely would say that would be something that, uh, uh, especially in the hot weather, be look into is uh, that unit uh, from um, from Icy Breeze. They have a version two. They have a couple of different ones uh, on there. They have a platinum and ultimate. Um, so the thing is, they have a couple of different ones that uh, do different things. So I definitely would say uh, if you can check them out, take a look at it. Um, I know uh, Kevin's in the chat. He said, uh, me and my RC commercial. Yeah, it's a commercial to me and my RC. It goes back to the to the 70s and early 80s. Uh, he prefers Powerade versus uh, Gatorade, which is, you know, again, uh, fine. And the thing is that Gatorade uh, was a Quaker, a Quaker Oats product. Uh, and it, actually up in Barrington, Illinois, they used to have a research center and they would research it with the Barrington High School kids, giving them free Gatorade, uh, having them try new flavors and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if they still do that or not. Uh, it's been a long time since I heard about that. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that Gatorade has been sold by someone else. But Powerade is, Coca-Cola. Everyone has, you know, has to have their own sports drinks and stuff like that. So, and then uh, Kevin also says a, a Cobalt battery fan. And those evaporate towels around my neck like Elvis for me. Yeah, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's a special material. Uh, it's like neoprene that you wet, you damp, and put around. I have one of those. And trust me, I I, I would love to have one of those on uh, Saturday night. I didn't think inside of a building it would be that hot. Uh, <laughs> but again, next time if I go there again, I know what to do. So I'm going to go to California next. Because uh, Matt always deals has deals with outdoors, and California is a warm place. What's going on, Mikey Mike? Uh, what do you do to keep uh, cool or warm or anything like that uh, with temperatures? Uh, well, inside can get hot, too. Uh, that yeah. venue that the laser one was at that I just posted on Facebook, there was no air conditioning in that big, uh, big barn. Uh, not a barn, but I don't know what you call it, like a central room they had air conditioning in all the bathrooms around it they had air conditioning in the entryway um but they didn't have air conditioning in the main room and it was brutally hot in there so uh that's also why there was only 40 people on the dance floor sometime because people were outside because it was much cooler in the air outside than it was inside so uh i don't uh i have i have a little USB-C rechargeable fan um, that's got kind of those like bendable legs so you can wrap it around a pole or something. Uh, I usually just leave that on my desk and it's got four speeds and it's plenty fast enough and it keeps me nice and cool. Um, I don't like the ground fans, um, those like Lasco fans or whatever, because it's just blowing out the air that's on the ground. So uh, it's going to be hot and dusty, gross air that's blowing at you. Uh, so I used to, used to have one of those and then I would come back from the event and there'd be just dust in my eyes and my lips would be chapped and my skin would be dry. So I hate those ground fans. Um, uh, I have one that's brand new. that's been sitting in my storage for a year and a half now. Um, so. Are you yeah. talking about the ones that have the, uh, they have mm -hmm. the squirrel cage fan that blows that usually, they use like professionally like blow across floors. Yeah. Yeah. Those. Yeah. I don't like um, but I, I do have a, I have a neck fan that I use for like setting it up. That works pretty well. Um, otherwise, I mean, just cold water. I've got a hydro flask like everybody else. So that's all there is to it. Um, I try not to do too many outdoor events in the summer. It also doesn't get crazy hot here, but we we're in a, that heat dome you guys have, it's moving its way over here later this week. So it's supposed to be up in the, 90s and 100s next week so that's uh super exciting yeah it's it's it's, it's warm today but it's not hot it's uh we have, we have wonderful long. in my nice new apartment here we have wonderful air conditioning though that i could start with my phone and it's uh it's life-changing oh uh, the ryobi fan 
Yeah, that's no, my central air conditioning here. Oh no, uh, uh, Kurt was showing. Uh, oh oh yeah, yeah, he had it up there. So, I have a great though. My my Hazer, um, what I was using this weekend, we were using Haze with in that venue with the lasers. I found this USB C rechargeable oscillating fan um, that's like fast enough, and it's probably about eight inch eight inch blades or eight inch fan or whatever. And I just set it on top of the Hazer and let it oscillate, so it kind of gets all the haze evenly spread out, which I don't know why I never thought to do that sooner, but I'll start doing that. Those first. lasers look amazing, I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Get going. Well, now you gotta do now you gotta do something down there in Australia with some lasers now. We gotta see you doing some lasers. No, we can't use haze anywhere. It's annoying. No, not anymore. Well, they also, uh, I, I saw an article, and I get off the DJ subject for a second or two, uh, for one of the uh, sh uh, one of the truck uh, shows on YouTube. Uh, they did an article, I guess, uh, the American uh, pickup trucks down in Australia, they call them Yank Tanks, and they're, uh, some people don't like them. Uh, so my F-350, uh, if I was driving to Australia, they would not like a 6.7 liter uh, diesel that uh, can pull more than a, one, of, uh, um, one of the other little pickup trucks can. Um, they wouldn't, they don't like those down there. <laughs> they're just jealous. I think they're too expensive to buy down here. Yeah. They were showing, uh, the Ram, uh, I want to say 1500 or 2500. It was like, you know, it's like 85,000 us by the time they import it and then make it uh right-hand drive. It was like 126,000, uh, yeah. us. So it's like, yeah, I guess I can see that, but people are buying it. You know, they have their big boats, they have the money to do it. God bless them, you know. So, uh, Jordan Taylor, what do you guys do to keep yourselves cool when you're hot? Or, again, if it's cold out, what do you do to keep yourself warm? How do you keep yourself comfortable? The nice thing with two of us is, like, if one of us is really exhausted or needs a break to cool down, you know, I can go switch out and sit in the air conditioning in the car or something and kind of, you know, drink your water, get yourself, you know, back in order um but you know when we set up bring a change of clothes um drink lots of water um make sure we eat um that's kind of what i was gonna say i I, yeah. I bring a lot of clothes and when i set up i make sure like i usually wear like basketball shorts and the thinnest shirt i can find because i sweat profusely i have to wear a hat <laughs> And the hat will be drenched. I'll have to bring a second hat because it's just. Yeah. And I, I will go sit in the car and make it so cold that like it's starting to frost the windows, and we'll just leave it running for. We'll switch off and just. Yeah. I'll sit in there until I'm not sweating anymore. I probably changed my shirt three times. Uh, but once we get DJ, and I'm not too bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Because then it starts to kind of cool off later in the night, you know. Um, later oh. it gets, but. I mean, I mean, for me being a girl, you know, I could just like wear a dress or something or, you know, something cooler that helps, you know, you wear something with like a thinner material or something. I try to wear, yeah, too, when, when it's hot, like I'll wear the thinnest pair of dress pants I can find or something like that to so, kind of. Yeah. So generally, Tracy, usually she has, um, we have t-shirts we had made which our logo on it. You, you've seen it at the, the wedding mm -hmm. show, uh, her polo, mm -hmm. same thing. She's a t-shirt, um, uh, black t-shirt and she wears shorts and she'll, you know, wear that for a setup and stuff like that. And, uh, basically at like nine 30 at night, that night at the wedding, she's like, I'm changing. I, I can't take this anymore. She, she changed over to just at the end of the, of the wedding, getting ready to, you know, start putting things away. And, and she had her T you know, her, company shirt on and shorts on she's like it's it's so hot up here and the, the bride <laughs> actually was like i wish i could do that <laughs> she was like i can't say jealous but she was like oh man i wish i could do that but it is it, it was it was hard because you're inside and when we're we were at if you look at the picture on again my social media my personal social media uh there was no airflow where we were at so it kind of sucked um but I know some man who is hot all the time, especially at the clubs and stuff like that. He's so hot, he wears a half jacket. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, uh, what do you do to keep yourself cool or warm in the heat or in the cold? How do you keep yourself comfortable? Uh, I try to just, like, dress accordingly. I mean, 
obviously it's a little bit tougher to do that when you're trying to not be hot compared to cold. But like I've had a DJ in pretty cold uh, climates before and uh, you got to try to bundle up as much as you can. But like I've noticed it's hard to like like my hands will get numb because like I can't be wearing gloves and DJing. Um, so I'll try to bring like hand warmers or something. Then in like warm temperatures, I'll try to uh, wear a different pair of clothes when I'm setting up. Uh, I've got like a fan that sometimes for an outdoor event I'll bring in. I can clip it onto my uh, controller case so it's just aimed right at me or I can turn it to be aimed at my computer if it's starting to get a little bit hot. And then like I try to request like an umbrella or a tent or something if I'm outside just because uh, not only does it help keep a little bit cooler, but if your uh, laptop is in direct sunlight, then it can very easily overheat. So that just helps prevent that as well. And that's, again, those are, those are key things to remind yourself of keeping your equipment safe too, because uh, like we discussed last week uh, with the one um, uh, DJ that was DJing out in rain, your gear is important. And, you know, again, sweat onto gear, it's no different than, you know, rain or, you know, you take a cold drink and it's the condensation outside of drink dripping on your computer or on your controller or on anything. Uh, you don't want to do that because water electricity can get people seriously hurt or even, uh, you know, put them in the forever box. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to keep everyone safe, but yeah, it is, uh, it is crucial to make sure you drink stuff. Um, Mikey Mike says, I hate the heat. I have two huge fans blowing on me drinking uh, water and Gatorade. See, he's a Gatorade fan there, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Kevin. He's not a uh, Powerade fan. I, I I like both, so I can't complain. Uh, have at least two or three fans blowing on our equipment. Uh, now for cold weather, I wear shorts 12 months a year, and winter I wear a hoodie. Yeah, I, I like I have shorts on, like you know, most of the time as well. Um, and you know, it's one of the things that I like. You know, I like shorts. I have tons of tons of black t shirts. I know that's that's like I have like 10 or 12 of these. You know, it's like I go through them and it's like, man, you know, uh, Tracy's like all these black shirts. She puts a whole entire load in of just black t shirts. It's it's the way it is. Um, but it's it's one of the things that uh, yeah you need to dress comfortably and that's that's a hard part, Mister Dixon. I know that uh, when I went to grade school and I'm I'm a uh, a student of the Chicago Board of Education, so I went to high grade school in the eighties. Yeah, it's showing my age there. Uh, my high school was air conditioned. My grade school was not air conditioned. So I know how hot my school was when I was a kid. Now they have air conditioning, of course, way after, you know, I, you know, I, they, way after being graduated from there and away from there, uh, they have air conditioning now. But uh, I don't know if your school is air conditioned or not, but how do you keep cool and comfortable at a gig uh, in the heat or the cold? Well, if I'm outside, I have a um, 10, by, uh, 10 foot by 10 foot tent that I'd be under. Then I have two USB fans blowing. Then for my computer, I have one of those um, computer that's not plugged in right now with a fan to keep it cool. Then also, I drink a lot of water or a par drink. And then my air conditioner decided to go out last week. So I bought one of, one of those little, it's like a little square box that you can put water and ice cubes in it and it and it blows out cold mist. So I have that going. And for like the winter, I have a small um, heater, portable um, heater that I'll plug in behind me. Okay. But uh, the little, um, that is a, basically a swamp cooler where you put the ice in and stuff like that. That yeah. uh, It does that. That's a nice little box. Did you get your air conditioning fixed? Nope. Um, I bought a, I watched YouTube, so I bought a um, was that I think it's a capacitor, so okay. I changed that out, and things started to run except for the compressor. So we had a guy come out, and he said, "Of course, it can't be fixed or all that." But then I watched another YouTube person. They were saying, "Well, if this happens with the model that I have, there's a little like a jumper thing you can oh, plug yeah, in high start. and it." And hopefully they'll start. They'll be in Thursday. Okay, hot start. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, that's a, it's a it's an additional capacitor gives an extra boost of power to kind of kickstart the uh, the compressor, kick it over. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why I know that is because YouTube. <laughs> there's a youtuber i watch does hvac i watch a lot of youtube tracy complains about that sometimes <laughs> it's not all just dj stuff it's truck stuff it's food cooking food stuff uh hvac stuff it's a bunch of different stuff my uh my youtube channel is uh <laughs> i have i watch a lot of stuff and mike said uh while wow, elementary school in the 80s i started high school in 79 in uh 1979 i was Let's see here. The blizzard is 79. I was seven years old. So I was starting grade school, basically. So I would have been first grade. First or second. It was first or second grade. So uh yeah, I, I you know I'm a little bit younger than you are. <laughs> and you know, there's people in the 90s and stuff like that. But that's one of the fun things is that I always claim that uh when I went to grade school, you hear people walking, you know, both ways uphill. I did walk both ways uphill, two blocks of school, two blocks home. That was really cool for grade school. But my school did not have air conditioning. They opened the windows up and can't tell me times uh, bees and wasps would fly into the, the classroom and chase kids around. It was always fun. <laughs> it's an adventure. <laughs> well, that's why I'm glad I was in uh, grade school in the 90s and 2000s. We had air conditioning. There you go. See? It, see? Chicago Board Ed did not have it again. You guys are lucky, you know. <laughs> us old, us old timers, you know, back in my day. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Jeff, did you have air conditioning in your grade school or no? No. Uh, see, <laughs> we're tougher. <laughs> there was no aircon in schools in the nineties where I'm from. So. DJ Cool thing must be lucky. Yeah, he's yeah, I mean, he, we had box units, nothing. We didn't have any HVAC or anything like that. Little I feel privileged. Sometimes I, feel privileged. I feel like those make it worse. They don't even work. <laughs> we had central air. <laughs> hey, I'm so old. I didn't have air conditioning in college. Okay. Uh. <laughs> box fans in the windows, baby. That's how I did it. Uh, yeah, oh, house fans. It's the uh, the cheap air conditioning, you know, run all four windows down, run 40 miles an hour, you know, the 440 air conditioning system. So, <laughs> uh, okay, Mike, go ahead with your quick question. Um, let's see here. What's his quick question real quick? Because we're going to be ending this uh, soon. Let's wait for him to put the question up there. Hopefully it's not a long question. <laughs> And again, I want to thank you guys all for watching the show out there. And you know, again, we got we got Dynablin here from Australia. Uh, unfortunately, he because of uh, work and stuff like that, he's not doing as many uh, gig logs on YouTube. Can't you know? It just takes a lot of time and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it's it kind of stinks for him. But he's still going to do them from time to time. He's still going to be you know on YouTube, just not as much. But uh, we so we so love him. He's gonna be warm and welcome here. He's still doing gigs. He's still DJing. I saw that, and I will tell you this: I saw that, and I thought you're quitting DJing. I'm like, oh no, you better not. <laughs> I I'm like, oh no, I read more. I'm like, oh okay, you're not doing YouTube as much. Oh, I totally understand that. Um, still got a couple more years left of me. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe soon, yeah, maybe soon. Me and DJ Downboy can get up one day and go to the Australia Zoo because my mom wants to go to the Australia Zoo. There you go. So uh, two things what Mike said is that he was able to smoke in classrooms in college. So he was in, when he was in college, he can actually smoke cigarettes in class. Yeah, wow, that, that, that's totally... It wasn't weird. approved, but I didn't say I didn't do it. Well, no, people did that. They got in trouble for that. And then uh, he asked... Who uses virtual DJ? I know I'm a virtual DJ. Jeff's virtual DJ. Uh, Man, Taylor's virtual me. DJ. Cool thing, virtual DJ. Yeah, uh, Matt, you're virtual DJ, right? I don't know if he's paying attention. Yeah. To that. I think he's uh, he's on with a client. Yeah, yeah. he might be. Yeah, I only so use Matt, virtual Matt's virtual DJ. DJ. He he did switch over recently, so yeah, he he's using. Yeah, he he's a user. <laughs> and who here is uh, Recordbox? 
and then Serato. Bretley. Bretley uses Wrecker Box. I use Serato. Serato. Everybody else is Serato. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm all I'm like off and on with Wrecker Box and Serato. No, you do all three. You know how to do all three. So you're yeah. versatile. I, I do that. Yeah. Yeah, you I can get out any situation. You're like a guy. Yeah. Maybe Speaking I, of looking after ourselves with the brakes and the keeping cool and the and the mm -hmm. whatnot. I wish Serato would fix up their auto play. Well, Virtual again, DJ has got a great auto play. I, I, I probably, you know, Virtual DJ has it too. I put a few songs there to run to the bathroom real quick and run back. Other than that, I do everything. I do everything all the time because the auto, re, all the auto mixed system on Virtual DJ, it's bad. Everyone, you know, it's it's designed to like, you know, you want to take a, yeah. a quick break or something like that. That's what it's designed for. It's not designed. There are some people who do it all night long, just take songs, drag it over and let the computer do all the work. Uh, but yeah, it's not really designed for, you know, designed for that. So yeah, I'm yeah, I'm personally a engine DJ guy because of this thing. I use. Well, yeah, sample. you're using. You're not using a laptop right now. So with that said, now we actually and we were able to answer Mike's question and found out that when he went to college, you can smoke in <laughs> in there. And then he's asking, "What do you guys think of the new Rain controller?" Ooh, yeah. Rain dropped oh, a new yeah. controller. The Rain Performer. Nice. Rain Performer. So who here is... I'm the only Rain guy, I think. At, not buying it, looking at it, and thinking about maybe. No, because <laughs> it's only useful if you scratch. or use it, and it only works with Serato, too. Um, I mean, I'm sure it'll work with Virtual DJ eventually, but it's Down made the road, yeah. Serato. So I... And I don't... That's the thing is, I don't start a song from play i start it from pause with a cue point i never press the play button except to end a song like i don't i don't press that play button i don't hold i don't use a cue button i've never used a cue button my entire life i have no idea what it's for um so i you Finally, know someone it's, said it it's it's point like what's the point of a cue button if you have a hot cue like yeah, headphones it's no, not, not that cue button. I meant the the one on the track. Yeah, the one like, above the play. What is it for? Yeah, it's someone explain it to me. <laughs> I don't know. I can't explain it. You I, it. Just, I, I use, have I use it if I have, if I used up all my other eight um uh, cue points. How are you gonna use more than eight though? Start. I don't even use more than five. You got pages on your you can have like 16 cue points, don't you yeah. have where you could do like page two? I just I just keep it at five. I use my first eight pads. I use the first five as cue points. Six is my air horn. Seven is rewind. Eight is fast forward. Ah, uh, the DJ air horn, the dreaded DJ air horn. I just, oh, you love the air horn. People love I the, hate air the air horn. horn. I use it. I've made myself jump. <laughs> I actually, have it all the way up and hit it. Ah, oh, see. <laughs> But yeah, I hate that the sample volume is annoying because my my old controller would just match what your current output level was. But with the rain, like I have to adjust sample volume, and like sometimes I'll forget it's super high and it'll just blast me. Yeah. That's okay. you, like every, you like doing everything at the loud as it possibly can be, and everyone's ears are bleeding. It's fun. They Mine's said they said on uh, on on Sunday the wedding that I had posted. She's like, I could like she said my my chest is still rattling from the bass. <laughs> at the end of the night i'm like that's that's a good accomplishment <laughs> for some reason on my controller if you uh because my sample volumes channel four and there's that little switch if i have if i flip it to channel four it just puts sample volume at 100 percent, and you go to do it and it is just entirely cheap. every time it gets me well you know what I guess you guys guys change things around and adjust and remember to do it because that's terrible. Just add it, add one more thing to the pile of things you had to do before you start DJing. You know, oh, I got to do this, do that, do this, do this, do this. Yep, yep. Oh, you got to love software. Supposed to make life easier. Nope. It's a tough job. <laughs> I want to DJ at club and and just chill. <laughs> uh, well, if Bradley was here, he would tell you that DJing in club, I'm sure, has its own pitfalls. Uh, and, and, you know, Tommy could say that because Tommy has done clubs a bunch of times. I'm sure he has his own pitfalls and stuff. There's there's pros and cons. It's fun, though. There's always a lot of energy. Um, oh, yeah. I've, I've seen some great uh, great stuff here, uh, especially some of your stuff on social media. Make sure you follow one here on social media. They all have links down below. And we're going to cut this out, but I'm going to have uh, actually have uh, Jordan and Taylor take it out for us tonight. Uh Jordan Taylor, say goodnight to everyone, please.
Thanks for tuning in. If you take anything away from this, have proper cooling for your laptop. Have a good one, guys. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Good night.